right, guys, so we're going to make a vase here. Uh, I've already gathered the clear glass out of the furnace and applied the color to save a little time so you don't have to watch me melt the color in. What we have here is clear glass with a veneer of white and purple glass on top of it. I'm going to put in a color pattern by twisting up the surface of this glass. These swirls are going to create a nice pattern in the surface of the glass. Now, one of the interesting things about glass color is that as you twist and fold and, and press it, you're not blending the colors into a new shade. They might layer and create slightly different looks, but it's not like paint. You're not going to mix yellow and blue glass together to get green. Uh, so what you'll end up with once this texture is melted away is a lot of nice swirls and movement in the color, uh, but no actual texture and not a new color being developed as you mix them together. Now it takes a little bit of time to get those twists in, and in that time that glass is cooling down. So I'm going to go back into the furnace and warm it back up, letting most of that texture melt away. If I don't, when I gather over it, uh, that viscous liquid inside the furnace, that, that real thick glass, isn't going to flow into those divots and pitches very well and will trap big air bubbles. I don't mind small air bubbles, but large ones can become structural issues. They might get too close to the surface and get too thin, and then they pop and leave little sharp edges, and we don't want that. So I've melt most of that texture away. What doesn't melt, I will press out on this table. called a barber, by the way. Now this is solid glass, I need to make it hollow. To get that, I'm going to uh, use a technique called the puff and cap. I'm going to blow into the pipe, trapping the air inside with my thumb. Pressure builds up and has to go somewhere. My thumb doesn't move, but that glass at the end of the pipe is getting pushed against. And eventually, uh, as that air heats up and expands more and pushes more and more against that glass, it will start to expand there. It goes just a little bit larger. And that's about the size starter bubble I like to start with. I'm going to let this cool way down, then I'm going to go back into the furnace and get more glass on top. Uh, I can tell the temperature of the glass a few different ways. I can look at the color. That's a good indication. I can watch the way it moves when I stop turning the pipe. Even tapping on the glass gives a good indication of the temperature. Uh, that sounded very dull. Um, so I know that there's still give to the material. It's still moving around. I need this to be really cold before I move on to the next step. That looks pretty good now. It's not really moving. If I tap on it, you're going to hear that difference. It's a sharper sound. That's really cold now. That's only down to about a, about a thousand degrees, which is cold with the glass on. It's all relative. So I'm going to go back in the furnace, scoop up another layer of glass, and start shaping this up with my favorite tool. This next step, a lot of people do differently. Um, some people like to use the marver for this next step. Some people use a wooden shaping block, and some people like myself prefer paper, ordinary paper that has been soaked in water. That lets you grab the glass and squeeze it into shape. There's not a right or wrong way to do this. It's just what works best for you, personal preference. I prefer the paper because it will conform to whatever shape my hand tells it to. I tend to keep my paper wetter than some people. Uh, anytime you're shaking the glass with a wet tool, especially paper, uh, you are cooling it down extra fast. So go back into the furnace, let the heat soak back into it, get the whole thing moving, get that heat back down into the core. I've left a lot of clear glass on the bottom because I want it to be thicker down there. I'm also going to cool it as I marver it. it even thicker on the bottom. There we are. Now as I inflate, that glass is going to stretch and push its way down and out. That's where I like to give this a swing. I'll just 
establish a jack line here on bases. I'm not too concerned with how tight the jack line is. So I'll use irregular and thick tops to my advantage when I open them. Moving the whole thing back up, we'll stretch it a little bit longer, and then I'll start to inflate the bottom of our base. Where I've kept all that extra thickness, we'll have a nice reservoir at the bottom of the piece. swing to stretch it out. A little bit more definition to that jack line. Don't drop your jacks in the water. That's usually not helpful. Alright, I'm going to let this cool down and stabilize for a little bit. While it's doing that, I'm going to warm up two more pipes. The face needs to sit flat on a table, and I could flatten the bottom of this, but I'd lose that nice curve. And so what I'm going to do is put a little pedestal of clear glass on the bottom to hold this up and display it. The door needs to be open just a little bit more. I use my furnace as a reheating chamber as well as a melting chamber. a little bit of a heat. And since I don't have a pipe hanger here, I'm just going to stand it up right. Grab some clear glass out of the furnace. Just a little bit more. Letting that flow off the end of the pipe nice and round. When it's hot, it should come really easily. Now, I'll always take a moment when I do this just to make sure no dirt or debris got into the mouthpiece. That way, when I turn over the piece, no dust falls down inside. If I had a pipe hanger here, that wouldn't be an issue at all. So I fuse that together, I'll take a moment, warm that foot back up, and start shaping it up with blades of jacks. I'll take just a second to make sure that it's centered. That squeaking sound. I forgot to wax my jacks before starting this piece. Not ideal. So what I'm going to do is take a moment, wax the jacks. And finish up that foot. nice and flat. I'm going to make my punty now. Just gather a little bit of glass on the end of the step down punty. Shape it into a dome about a sixteenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch off the end of the pipe. And tack fuse it to the bottom of the piece. Pulling it down make sure it doesn't overfuse. Before I fully stick it, I'll just give it a few turns, make sure it's on center. I usually use two drops of water along the jack line, a gentle tap, and it pops right off.
On top of this is the coldest part, of course. It needs to become the hottest part. But that'll take a little bit of time, and it depends on a lot of uh, things. Uh, the thickness of the glass, of course, the color you're using, the temperature of the furnace, all of that matters. But even things uh, like the humidity level and barometric pressure will matter when you're outside. So you can't set a timer for this. It's just something you feel when it's ready. I'm focusing the heat on the neck and upper shoulder of the piece. Every once in a while when I flash the whole thing to keep heat in the bottom, I'll put the lid directly in the flame that's firing the furnace. Because of the way I create my jack lines, that lip stays thicker. And it needs a little extra heat to get moving at the same rate the rest of the piece is. I want this neck really moving because I'm going to stretch it quite a bit. the way back to the furnace, I'm going to angle it down so it stretches and lengthens the hair. And I like this uneven lip because it's going to add to the design on the final step. Now first we're going to stretch that neck over the jacks, flaring the lip just a little bit. And now for the final step, we're going to sling the top of this. Before I do, I'm going to create some more inconsistencies in the lip It's going to contribute more asymmetrical top. Now this final step should be relatively quick. Depends on how much heat I let escape from the top uh, while I was shaping it. This is a lot faster when you're using a furnace and a reheating chamber at the same time rather than just a furnace. Because the longer this door stays open, the more heat this will happen relatively quickly, it's starting to move. It can happen in five, four, three, two, and now we will sling this. I'm turning the pipe while I'm swinging it so that those ruffles don't touch back on each other. But there we go, get a nice clean pull, a nice distribution of the glass, and a really nice asymmetrical top. I'm gonna remove this from the putty. I'll just gently tap at the connection, then send a vibration through the pipe, it pops right off. That sharp edge away. I'm going to leave the visual evidence that it's there. I'm not going to fully polish it, but I'm going to just make sure it's not sharp enough to cut someone. And I'm going to warm up my glove just a little bit so I don't shock the glass when I put it away. There we go. That piece is about 12 to 13 inches tall. It'll stay in that oven. Until tomorrow morning at 925 degrees where it will slowly cool overnight. I'll start that cooling process here in about an hour once I finish filling up the box. Uh, and I'll post pictures of it tomorrow. Thank you.